Our coach, terrific season last year. You guys end up winning 22 games. You make the NCAA tournament after some down years. Mm -hmm. You know, you certainly had had some struggles after the, the initial NCAA tournament run. How rewarding was it for you guys to get back to, to having that type of success? No, it was great. I think we all believed it mm -hmm. can happen, but until you go out and, and actually do it in, in a conference like the Big Ten. But we believed in our guys. It was kind of a rebuild process with Boo and Chase and Robbie Barron and all those guys that kind of stayed the course with us for four years. And to see them be able to go out last year and put it all together, you know, with negativity in their face, uh, to, to come in second place, to get to the NCAA tournament, win a game, you know, it was uh, very rewarding as a coach. Last year's team, even though you've had some, some good defensive teams, seemed like it had a different defensive identity. Yeah. How were you able to flip that so quickly? I think just the belief and the buy-in from the guys. It's mm -hmm. like anything, you know, as a coach you can say, I want to do this or I want to play this way. If the guys don't fully embrace that, it's not going to work. Yeah. And, you know, we bought a few different things with our scheme and we tried to get a little bit more aggressive to get some more turnovers and maybe get out on the open floor and, and it seemed to really work for us. And, and our guys really bought in and, and embraced it and, and hopefully that can be a continued part of our identity going forward. You, you get Boo Booey back for a graduate year. Were you surprised to get him back or what was that process for him like maybe evaluating his opportunities? Yeah, I mean, for any any guy, you want him to see what their pro potential is going to be, right? I mean, we I wanted him to go through that process. I wanted him to get that feedback. Um, but it was very clear during that time he was he was in our gym every day you know he was around the guys you could tell that his heart you know still was at Northwestern which was great and it was all him you know he said coach I got more to prove I think I can get better you know I think there's more for my legacy there's more winning and I want to come back and and obviously that was music to my ears when you get a, <laughs> a point guard who's been a starter for five years and an all-league caliber guy to come run the show for another year is going to help give us a chance, hopefully, to be competitive this year. What do you think is the next step for his game, or what's his progression, especially with Chase yeah. Odige now playing professional basketball? I thought he made a huge jump last year with decision-making, with kind of managing the game, when to distribute, when to score. Mm -hmm. Certainly got to the line a lot more. I thought he played stronger. Um, was a better defender. I think next year, just uh, the shooting, you know, I mean, and, and I think it was uncharacteristic for whatever reason. He's been a good shooter, uh, but his percentage, you know, will tell you, I think he was around 30% from three. If we can get that up to the high 30s, you know, close to 40, I think it's going to even make him even more dangerous as a player. In your time at Northwestern, it seems like there's been these moments, whether it's the, the Derek Pardon <laughs> deal, or I even look at the Purdue game last year. Yeah. Is there a favorite maybe moment or game when you look back at your time as the head coach? Because you've, you've been there a while now. You're starting <laughs> to be wild. one of the, upper, the higher know, tenured wild. guys in the league. Yeah. Is there a moment that you look at where it's like, man, that, that's my favorite moment? Uh, there are a couple when you're somewhere for going on 11 years, yeah. you know, there's di different stages. You know, I remember my first year, we weren't very good. You know, my first conference game, we lost by about 100 to Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. And then later that year, that was their Final Four team. You know, we went up there and won in the Kohl Center. And that was kind of, as a coach, my first saying, like, man, we can do this. You know, there was that first glimmer of hope. Right. Um, you know, the Michigan game was so special, that first kind of stamping of going to the first ever NCAA tournament. And then, you know, Purdue last year being, it was Super Bowl Sunday. Yeah. It was kind of the only game. You know, they're number one in the country. The atmosphere we had in that building to come back late and kind of uh, steal that game the way we did and have the energy and enthusiasm of our fan base. I think those three, you know, kind of stand out as, as being really special. You know, your dad lives in Chicago, and he's so well known for being a coach, a commentator, um, one of the voices of the 90s NBA, I would say. How much do you, do you lean on him with him so close, and, and how cool is it and special for you that You've got a guy that not only is your dad, but yeah. he really knows the game as well. Uh, probably lean on him more than he knows. You know, <laughs> I mean, obviously, father-son relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, first and foremost, it's that's what he is to me, his dad. But to have someone who has been in the NBA for 50 years, played in the Olympics, yep. played at a high level, coached, broadcasted. I mean, what a resource to be able to bounce things off. And I think the thing he's helped me with more than anything is not maybe specific X's and O's, but it's just big picture stuff. You know, how to 
work through struggles, you know, maybe how to help give a player confidence, you know, when he needs it, how to manage our team, how to help me take care of myself, you know, as he's been through the rigors of being an NBA coach and things that he maybe wishes he would have done better during his time. So I think having that resource is amazing. And I love it for the guys, yeah. you know, he stopped stop by a practice and he's like the, the grandfather, you know, who comes in, he watches, they all migrate to him after and he's telling stories of, of all his time and, and they just eat it up, which I think is really cool. That is really cool. You bring in two transfers to this year's team, not really asking about them as players, but how challenging is it at an institution like Northwestern where academics are yeah. certainly, they're important elsewhere, but they're they're really important at Northwestern. How challenging is it to, to get guys that maybe fit with the school is looking for. Yeah, I mean, for us, we're not going to be able to just feast off transfer portal. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're we've been fortunate to be able to, like you said, find some fits, you know, throughout the years that we fit needs, fit who our culture is, fit our school academically. You know, we feel excited this year. We got two guys, Ryan Langborg from Princeton. Mm -hmm. You know, so ac he's probably taking those a step down. Those academic he's transfer. taking a step down <laughs> academically to come to the Cats, but uh, excited about him. Ivy League champion, Sweet Sixteen. Um, you know, Blake Preston coming from Liberty. He's actually married. My first player that I've had is married. Really? So, you know, we got some grown men coming into the program that have been a part of uh, winning. They they know what it takes, been well coached, and, and fit is everything. You mm -hmm. know, I think that's the one thing I've learned over the 10 years is it's one thing for a guy to have talent, but does he fit who your program is? And that's what we've really tried to focus on. Okay, so I just found this out about you, but you are probably one of the few NCAA coaches who has lived in Finland. Oh my God, yes, <laughs> what, I have. <laughs> what, what did you enjoy most about the basketball over there? Was it the herring? <laughs> uh, it, it was a different experience. You know, the, the darkness was, was something that I remember. Being in Scandinavia <laughs> in, in the height of winter, there's mm -hmm. not a lot of sunlight. But I tell you what, for me, coming out of college, going over there and by myself, it was an amazing, you played overseas, like just the experience of like trying to figure stuff out. Yeah. Different culture, different language. I was in Helsinki, you mm -hmm. know, playing, you know, in their league, but just like on my own, you know, and it was kind of the first time I had to figure stuff out. You know, you, you don't realize how enabled you might be by the people around you until you get shipped, you know, to Scandinavia <laughs> yes. and you got to figure out. So it was a big part of my growth, but I was also happy to get back home. I'll never forget being in June in St. Petersburg and at midnight, it's like th 3 p.m. <laughs> right, right. or in the winter time when yeah, you're like exactly. saying the sun just <laughs> yeah. does not come out. Um, you played for Coach K. You coached under Coach K for a long time. What, what's the, the most important thing that you learned from him and have maybe taken as a coach and, and implemented with your guys? I think first and foremost, growing up, you always feel like coaching is straight like strategy, X's and O's. And what I learned from coaches, that's important, but it's not the most important. The most important is getting your guys to believe in each other, to fight for you as a coach, you know, to have that team camaraderie, that team building. That's what he founded his coaching on, you know, not, not just the X's and O's and strategy. It was the relationships and getting those. I always felt like those Duke teams, even though they had talent, they always played hard and they mm -hmm. always played for each other. And then the second thing is just his adaptability and, and flexibility to how the game was changing. Yeah. You know, he is old school. I mean, he played for Coach Knight. He's a West right. Point guy. But as rules changed, whether it be going to more one-and-done guys or with transfer portal, like things like that, he, he always stayed ahead of the game as, as the game was changing, as the climate of college basketball, to make sure that he could stay relevant and be successful. And that was something that always stuck with me.